Good morning, all. Imagine standing at the threshold of a vast, unexplored territory filled with untold possibilities and limitless potential. This is the realm of postgraduate studies, where the mystique and fear intertwine, casting their shadow on our academic journey. This morning, I invite you to embark on a transformative quest as we unravel the secrets of how to navigate this enigmatic realm, conquer our fears and unlock the treasures that lie within. How to face the mystique and fear associated with postgraduate studies. Postgraduate studies open doors to new realms of knowledge, research and professional growth. Yet, it is not uncommon for the mystique surrounding this educational pursuit to instill fear and uncertainty within us. The complexities of rigorous coursework, the demands of research and dissertation writing, and the anticipation of an unknown future can all contribute to these feelings. However, it doesn't have to be this way. With the right mindset, strategies, and support, we can face the mystique of postgraduate studies head on and eradicate the fear that could hold us back. Firstly, it's important for us to acknowledge that fear is a natural reaction to the unknown. Often, the fear associated with postgraduate studies arises from the pressure we put on ourselves to meet high expectations. The reality of it is that the prospect of immersing ourselves into a specific field of study and executing research is a huge responsibility, and this can be intimidating. However, it is crucial for us to remember that we qualify for this opportunity because of our potential, our passion, and our capabilities. So, in order for us to experience success throughout this process, we must learn to trust ourselves and our abilities. This journey requires us to embrace challenges with an open mind and a positive attitude. Let's talk about the importance of setting realistic expectations. Postgraduate studies require significant effort and dedication. The vital thing for us to understand, though, is that it does not need to be overwhelming. We must learn how to prioritize our workload. We must take time for self-care as there is no reward for burnout. The journey to mastery and profound knowledge cannot be acquired overnight. It requires patience, perseverance, and a mindful approach. Pushing ourselves to the brink of exhaustion hinders our progress. Instead, we must learn to pace ourselves, acknowledging that the postgraduate journey is gradual. Just as a mason meticulously lays block after block, we too must take one step at a time, understanding that each step is an essential building block in our own unique journey. It's important to recognize that everybody's journey to graduation will be different. We come from diverse backgrounds, possess distinct strengths, and have unique ambitions. Comparing ourselves to others or striving to meet arbitrary standards can lead to unnecessary stress and self-doubt. Instead, let us focus on our own growth and progress, celebrating each milestone and recognizing that our journey is tailor-made for us. However, it is important to acknowledge that we cannot navigate this path alone. Support and collaboration are invaluable to us. Surrounding ourselves with a strong support network is essential, as no great achievement is accomplished in isolation. In 2016, at my grad studies orientation, a completing student in her presentation to us encouraged us to help each other. She said, UWE has more than one master's and everybody can get one. As postgraduate students, 
We need support, and we must be strategic in seeking support from family, friends, mentors, and even our lecturers and research supervisors and members of our advisory committee. There are many persons who have completed this journey successfully and are willing to share their knowledge and experience with us. Let's, uh, let us reach out to others, even virtually, to share our concerns and uncertainties. And it is highly likely that they will be able to help us alleviate our fears and actually provide us with valuable insights. Another crucial aspect of facing the mystique of postgraduate studies is the need for time management and organizational skills. With the demands of coursework, research, and other commitments, these skills are of absolute importance. A lot of stress and frustration on the academic journey comes from feeling as if we've lost control, and this can be overwhelming. On this journey, we will find simple tools like calendars and to-do lists helpful. These tools will help us to monitor our performance as we keep track of tasks and deadlines. During our academic journey, maintaining focus on productivity is crucial for success. There's an app that I use to help me stay on track while writing, so please make note of it. It is called Forest Focus for Productivity. When I decide to write, I'll plant a virtual tree in the app. And, and as I stay focused and resist the temptation to use my phone, my tree thrives and flourishes. However, if I succumb to distractions and exit the app, my tree withers away. This gamified approach creates a sense of accountability, and you do feel guilty if you kill the tree. So it really does work and encourages me to stay committed to my work. It's easy to become consumed by the demands of our academic pursuits, as there's this tendency to think that once we've, you know, enrolled in a postgraduate program, you know, we're not allowed to enjoy all that life has to offer. But maintaining a healthy work-life balance is very important, as our well-being cannot be replaced with distinctions and high commendations. <laughs> On an academic journey, wellness is not a luxury. It is a necessity. We cannot afford to lose ourselves. It is vital for us to recognize that maintaining this balance is essential for our overall well-being and long-term success. As we immerse ourselves in the world of research, coursework, and academic commitments, it becomes crucial to set boundaries and allocate time for other aspects of our lives. We are not just students. We are individuals with passions, interests, and personal relationships that deserve attention and nurturing. This balance helps us to recharge, rejuvenate, and gain fresh perspectives. It allows us to bring renewed energy and creativity to our academic endeavors by taking breaks, engaging in hobbies, spending time with loved ones, and prioritizing self-care, we can enhance our overall productivity and prevent burnout. Lastly, we must embrace this transformative experience with a growth mindset. As we navigate the intricacies of postgraduate studies, we not only uncover valuable research findings, but also embark on a profound journey of self-discovery. Along the way, our interests and passions may evolve, and our perspectives on the world may undergo profound transformations. Indeed, the journey often leads us on unexpected paths, and our dissertation may differ significantly from our initial research proposal. Immersing ourselves in fully in this academic experience opens door to new insights and possibilities. We must view challenges as opportunities for growth, seeing setbacks as difficulties, setbacks and difficulties as stepping stones towards our personal and academic achievement. By reframing fear as a catalyst for growth, we unlock true potential. As we continue our journey through the realm of postgraduate studies, we will stand not as timid explorers, but as fearless conquerors. 
we will traverse unexplored territories, delve into the depths of knowledge and emerge transformed. Our experiences will shape us and we will grow in ways that we would not have imagined when we first set foot on this path. On this expedition, we will learn the art of navigating the mystique and face our fears head on. We will discover that the treasures within this realm extend far beyond the boundaries of our initial expectations. Our dissertation, a testament to our intellectual evolution, will take unforeseen twists and turns reflecting the dynamic nature of our scholarly pursuits. This journey will be challenging and we will encounter obstacles that test our resilience and resolve, but we will rise above them embracing each setback as an opportunity for growth and learning. Our willingness to adapt, explore new avenues, and question conventional wisdom will fuel our intellectual curiosity and expand the horizons of our knowledge. As we are gathered here at this milestone, let us recognize the profound transformation that has started to take place within us. We will acquire not only expertise in our fields, but also develop the resilience, adaptability, and critical thinking skills necessary to thrive in an ever-evolving world. We are equipped to make meaningful contributions, challenge the status quo, and shape the future of our disciplines. So my fellow explorers, as we bid farewell, let us carry the spirit of adventure, curiosity, and fearlessness with us. Let us continue to embrace new frontiers and unravel the mysteries that lie before us. Let us continue to inspire others with our passion for knowledge. Our journey will not end here. We will stay the course of a lifelong quest for intellectual growth and discovery. Thank you for joining me on this transformative quest. And may your future endeavors be filled with endless possibilities. And may you continue to face the mystique with courage and curiosity. Farewell, my fellow conquerors. And may your legacy shape the world for generations to come. Good morning, fellow scholars. All right, all right, thank you. Uh, let me first say I'm very, very pleased to be here this morning to share some of the experiences going through the program and, of course, how it has impacted my leadership competencies thereof. But first, let me begin by saying a big thank you to whom I consider the pioneering leaders in developing leadership competencies among graduates in TVET programs, Professor uh, Professor Morris, please put your hands together. <laughs> Dr. Powell and Professor Hutton. Uh, if you read their works, you will understand why. And they have had, um, colleagues, a tremendous effect upon me. Uh, you are the, what I re represent as the vastness of academic capital, because the system requires leaders who are thinkers out of the box. Dr. Powell usually uses the term the critical mass. And after years of doing the program, I see why. Because you are influencers and you're shapers of policy. And I'll tell you why. I started the program when I started principalship. Um, and it was truly difficult. When I did a first course on the philosophical foundations of TV, did you know that? Yes, yes man. The first grade I got, I said, no, man, something wrong. Something wrong, man, something wrong. But it was an opportunity to begin some self-reflection because you are determining your purpose in leadership. Remember, no, you know, we have social media influencers. We are policy influencers in our own right. And it was after doing that course, it was a kickstart for great things to come. Let me let you know a little secret, and Dr. Powell will, 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 will understand why. In the first year of doing the program, it, it was as if you were seeing things clearer. And it allowed me to vision Cumberland High School as the TVET Center of Excellence, mm -hmm. something that they continue 
to go after in the thrust to educating the boys and the girls. Come clap, man. Clap, man. <laughs> it's serious. Because as a leader, as, as, as leaders, not necessarily principal leadership, as heads of departments and, and supervisors, you have a chance. You are at the vanguard of influencing change. You are at the vanguard of influencing policies in your local schools. Yes? You are at the vanguard of influencing how students learn. And that is precisely what the program is all about. Influencing change. Influencing the education system. So the entire economic architecture can benefit from your influencing. Come on, clap, man. I'm working for my clap this morning. So the, the, the truth is, you have to be transformational leaders. Uh, I, I heard Lamar, great presentation. Um, and he seemed to be shying away from principalship. It's not about <laughs> principalship per se, because leadership is about influence. It's about purpose-driven leadership in such a way that you're creating and cascading continuous change. In your own right, as a fabricator, uh, that, uh, some gentlemen are doing some work at my house. They're you know, building some nice grills from a wall and all of that. And I stood home one day and just watched them. And I said to myself, this is hard stuff. I can't do this. How they do the design. Uh, uh, well, so them tell me, so them tell me. But they get the welding torch and the wet bit is the first time I was holding a welding rod for the first time. So guess who may remember? Dr. Powell. Dr. Powell said, you're the critical mass. So I said, that's how the critical mass feel. <laughs> But I was reflecting and I was saying to myself, can you imagine principals in an institution getting some at-risk boys in a specialized welding program to steer them away from a life of crime to a life of productivity? That's how influential you are. So that's why it's so important. I think you, did, you should do a course in transformational leadership. You should have done it by now. Uh, you'd have touched on it. I see, transformation is serious business because when I, when I unfurled the vision for Cumberland High School to be the TVET Center of Excellence, I faced resistance. People say, where I go with that? I want that in our help. So I had to utilize the vicissitudes of transformation leadership to let people understand the purpose of why we're doing what we're doing. So you can't shy away from it because what you learn in the, in the leadership program here at the Uni University of the West Indies will have lifelong influence. And it does not stop there because, because you are policy influencers, you are change makers, you are influencing the society in a huge way. Our current unemployment rate is around 12.2%. We have 1.2 million people in the population. But when you check the levels, when you dig behind the data, we find that a lot of our young men are shying away from what? Formal education or non-formal education to get them competence builders. So we, as, as, as emerging leaders, you have to be finding innovative ways of capturing the in imagination of our young people, particularly our young males. Get them into the formal system where they can understand the importance of training and education and certification. Absolutely important. I know the program is tough. I know it's rough. But the journey must continue. At Montego Bay Community College, I find that the impact of the program continues to morph. Yes, to morph. When you enter upon an institution, you know, you, you, you have to unpack and pull apart, look at culture, look at attitudes, look at performance, look at many, many things. And inside of what we are treating with now at, at the post-secondary level, the landscape has evolved quickly. As a leader in the post-secondary um, era, we have to respond accordingly. And so, as it stands now, we are building the message of what? Being the college of the future. Focusing on what? Preparing our youngsters for emerging and new careers to come. This is precisely how you're going to be influencing what? Policy and curriculum and change in your local context. So it's important to understand 
what role you're going to play when you leave the program itself. I think it's one of the most important programs right now in post-secondary education in Jamaica. It's still pretty young. Yes, man, clap, 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 clap. It's still very young, and I think they're studying the effectiveness of the program now. But I'm visioning the program to cascade beyond the walls of the UWI. Believe me, if, if we want our country to be agile economically, there are programs like these, masters and doctoral programs like these, that what? Provide the, the avenues for new talents to unfold and unfurl their competencies. This is what our country requires. We're very serious. I'm very serious about my country. I can't go anywhere, you know. I can't migrate like other people and go up foreign and clean dog teeth and all these things. I can't do those things. I'm not so competent there. I'm competent in my own country where I know I can cascade influence in a significant ways. Don't give up the fight. I know it's tough. Yes, by now you should be framing out what your final paper should be. My final paper was on examining um, high school students' attitudes to subject selection and TV choices and all of that. And we, we learned some, some serious things. I, I sent my study to the permanent secretary, and they're using aspects of it. Again, influencing policy. That's how powerful you are. So don't give it up. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to see you this far. Encourage others. And you're in your circles of influence and your circles of friends. Influence them to come what? Here and do it and influence a society for the future to come. Thank you very much. Thank you.